Yo, gamers, what is up? It's your boy, Goldemon12, back with another... Well, in this case, it's not a Honkai Star video. It's actually a Wuthering Waves video. Yeah, that's right, I'm talking about Wuthering Waves. I'm sure a lot of you didn't expect this if you were in my Discord. You would have expected it because I talked about it. Um, But today, I just want to talk about the game, uh, my expectations for it, right? And, well, that's what I'm going to title it. Will it be the next Genshin? Uh, I'll tell you right now, probably not. So, as everybody knows, Genshin Impact is one of the biggest games of, that's, you know, come out recently. Well, not recently, but it's one of the biggest games, you know, for a while, right? Uh, and I'm referencing this because this is one of the things that people have talked about a lot. The pre-registers for Weathering Waves. At the time of the recording, this is the amount of pre-registers, 30 million, which is a very impressive number. You typically don't see this for a lot of games. And well, I'm bringing this up because Genshin Impact, for example, had 10 million before its launch, right? And so now we are reaching numbers even bigger than Genshin by threefold, right? Now, this is interesting because if you were to look it up, the AI, Google AI, whatever, it's going to, you know, summarize points from different websites. But according to this, wherever it's driving this from, Genshin Impact has 66 million active players. So that's going to be players within the last 30 days, right? That is half or almost half, right? That are pre-registering it, which is very, very good to see for a game like this as well. It's going to bring competition for a game like Kitchen Impact if at least, ha let's say, again, half of your player base is wanting to check out this new game, right? That is very, very interesting. And people have been covering this for a while, right? I didn't get like beta access or anything, so I don't know. But the, you know, the thing to say about that is that, that there's clearly a lot of hype about this game, a lot of people interested in this game. And so I will be obviously looking at it, right? Now, I'm, I will be honest with you, I'm not the most hype, right? I'm not too excited about this game, and I'm going to list those reasons why in this video, but just to say that the numbers are definitely impressive, and there's a reason why everybody keeps talking about it, is because, again, before this, these free-to-play games never would reach these numbers like this. Like, this is this is crazy to think about. Like, uh, was it Star Rail, right, had more than Genshin, and now Weathering Waves has more than both, right, for pre-registers, which is insane to think about, right? You know, gotcha games, and... Again, free to play games, bef you know, previously would never see these numbers, and so this is just unprecedented numbers, like unimaginable numbers that we're getting for pre-registers, as be because of e the explosion of Genshin, right? There's just an explosion in Gacha in general, so people are just seeking out and looking for the next thing and being hyped for the, you know, newest game, right? And so we're gonna continue to see massive numbers for these games as now there's a culture around it, right? And so I think that's very interesting. Um, I myself will be covering this game just because it is the topic that. You know, people seem to be suggesting to talk about, and so I'll be doing so. <clears throat> a certain bald man's advice, right? Now, I myself, as I said, I'm not really hyped for this game, and there's multiple reasons why. Um, but I do think it is going to compete with Genshin, very obviously, because it's in the same sort of genre. Gotcha, open world. I mean, that's just that simple. Uh, I will start off with, though, my expectations for the game are not very high. And the reason for that is because visually, I still don't think it's that impressive. It is way better than it was before, but I still have an issue with a lot of its visuals. In particular, its models just look a little off to me. Like, they look kind of strange. Um, and that's just a personal thing. I'm not a huge fan of the design overall. Um, the aesthetic is totally fine, but design-wise, I don't really like any of the designs. And that's one of the one things that uh, I think is kind of a miss for this game, is I think a lot of the character designs and, like, enemy designs are just kind of boring or just n uninteresting. I mean, look, look, I will, I will say, um, they don't show it on here. There's a couple characters I do actually like and think are interesting. Um, and the art actually looks pretty good for, you know, some of these, but other than that though, there's nothing that like stands out to me. That's like a, that would be considered like an iconic design, right? Like, you know, Genshin, for example, everybody knows what the Luke looks like or something like that. Like, it's just something and, and the game has been out for a while to be fair, right? But there's those designs that just stand out. You're like, oh, that's probably Genshin. Or it's like, oh, you know, I've seen that before. It's like, oh, that's a simplistic design. So it's like, you know, it, it, it's like you can sort of tell what you're looking at, right? With this, it's not, I don't get the same feeling, if that makes sense. And I don't know, maybe it's hard to convey, but for me personally, I don't, I'm not huge on the visuals, like, overall, right? Um, and so that's a big, a big concern for me is that I might not like any of the characters and that's going to suck because then, you know, if the content isn't there and the characters aren't there, it's like, why am I even playing the game? Right. So there's that. Um, 
and speaking of content that's actually the main point of why i'm making a video like this is that and I mentioned this before on stream whenever I was talking about the game previously, is the biggest thing that gacha games don't do properly, at least these gacha games, specifically Hoyaverse. I think Hoyaverse is the biggest offender of this. It's the events and the actual content post-release. Now, let me explain. The most gacha games will spam you events, like will spam events or like stages or like missions to do. Because that is the in-game content once you beat everything else. That is your continuation of content. Genshin, Honka, Star World, they don't do that effectively. Star World's doing it, I would say, better than Genshin. But neither one are doing it super effectively, right? Genshin has obviously gotten a little bit better in that regard. But my concern and the reason why I relate it to those games is I think this game could possibly get into the same boat of having terrible events and mediocre in-game combat now our uh content right now i'm not saying the in-game content's bad i personally haven't seen it right i have been pretty disconnected from this game overall but my big concern for this game and what is going to keep players and you know like myself is the actual content of the game is the content past whatever the story is actually worth playing and me wanting to log into the game and that's one of the biggest issues that i have with these other games is that with a game like genshin right or specifically genshin in this case that they do terrible at their in-game content and they do terrible at their event content. And that's what a game like this needs to do, you know, strong in order to succeed, right? And that's part of the reason why Genshin, you know, falls off at the end game for a lot of players or they're disgruntled is that they don't have that good in-game content or good events to actually give you a reason to log in. And that's the biggest thing. You need to have a reason to log in for the player to want to keep playing, right? And I might, in listen, I'll probably end up getting some techno babble because, you know, I'm becoming a game developer, right? Studying for that bit. And so if I ramble on, forgive me, but I just got to, I got to yap about it. <clears throat> but the, the, the key thing is, and why I bring this up is because there's so many gacha games and a lot of new players to the gacha genre, because again, Genshin and Star World brought people into the genre. They don't know this, but other gacha games, they actually spam you event content. And all this event content is either permanent or no, it is permanent. Actually, all this event com content is permanent and will come back in a later event or it will um, just be straight up added to the game. And it's like, oh, this celebration, we're adding all this content. It's like, oh, this celebration, here's a limited event that will rerun later. Oh, this celebration, here's, you know, even more new content, more stages. It's a revamp of something, right? And they give it to you like weekly. There's like weekly stuff in there for a new event, new stage, new mission to do with an old event, right? Um, but that's where Genshin fails. They don't do that and that's what sucks because star world is kind of doing the same thing except arguably better because their events have generally been better than the genshin ones i say generally because like this current one sucks uh out there by the time you see this that other video should be up of me just yapping about it uh but if this game doesn't have strong events i think many people are just gonna quit because there's nothing they do are they just like yeah no these events suck why am i even playing the game at the end game right I just think that's going to be a game changer. People don't talk about that because they don't probably they don't realize that the end game events are one of the biggest things to a gacha game in general. Um, but Genshin's example, right? There's something that I said that needs to happen every single time they release a new region and they don't do it or new area. I mean, every time they release a new explorable area. Okay, let me restart this because it's the same thing I'm saying, but I'm overlapping myself here. So for Genshin, one of the biggest things I criticized is the exploration not being rewarding enough and the fact that there's less incentive to actually do it um, for a lot of players, right? Because they either find it boring or just gets annoying after a while or this isn't that, right? There's a whole bunch of reasons for it. One of the strongest things to actually incentivize the player to go explore and see the world and one of the biggest problems that Genshin has had, and this is why they are even in some cases changing their design philosophy for Genshin that they've you know mentioned in the interview before um that they don't give you an incentive to do the things right and what i mean by that is like what they should do and this is where i'm going with this is every single time they release a new area is that they should release it with a exploration event think back to when sumeru first came out they had an exploration event that was great because guess what there's these things that get you across the map you go do these extra objectives and then you can you know expand however you want do all this crazy stuff what genshin should be doing 
is every single time they release a new explorable area is have an exploration event that lasts the entire update. I don't know why they don't do this. It should give you extra rewards for playing right then and there now. So you're going to want to log in, explore to get all your rewards. And I'm not saying, oh, take out the rewards, put in the... Exp no, no, no. Just give us extra rewards for exploring right now. What, why I should log into the game. It's that simple. I don't know why they don't do it. You have that for the whole update, right? Star Rail has their event for the whole update, their main event for the whole update. Great. Do that for Genshin. Right? You can take it out once the update's over. And then second to that, week two, you run another event, right? Maybe that's the update's main event, like the current uh, music one in Genshin. I, I don't know what it is because it's probably terrible in the first place. I'll, I'll play it later, I guess. Or maybe I won't. I don't know. Um, but you do that week two. Week three, Leyline Overflow. Week four, the secondary event. Week five, the other secondary event. Right, or I guess tertiary event, right? But you know, the mini the mini events that happen. Week six, other late line overflow. You just do that, have a reason to log into the game every single day, week, whatever, and move on. I don't know why Genshin doesn't do this. It's the simplest thing. It would improve the game state massively, but they don't do it because they're buffoons, I guess. I don't know. Um But there's a simple way to run this, because guess what? Every other old gacha does this and they does it well. Look at Dokkan, for example, which is the main reference points, is that they do this, it works, it's fantastic. I don't know why Genshin can't follow a simple formula that would even work for the game. Um, it's ridiculous. And so this game, Weathering Waves, needs to do something like this. It needs to have a consistent way or consistent reason to log into the game and have that actual good content. And that's my biggest concern right there, is that I don't know if it's going to have the perpetual content that the game should have because it's a live service game, right? Um, and so that's my biggest concern with the game, is while probably will stop covering it at some point, or I intend to play it, right? But I think it will fall off if it doesn't have that content. That's the main thing. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It can be a little bit rambly, right? But there's a it's pretty broad in that regard. It just needs to succeed in that content that is going to give the player a reason to log into the game, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I want to know what the game's content is going to look like. Uh, I would love to see a roadmap from the developers. I don't know if they've done that, but that would be great to know what to expect out of the game, right? That'd be awesome. Um, and I guess from there, just be like, how does it compare to Genshin? I know that's going to sound weird and a lot of people are going to be like, oh my God, he keeps yapping about Genshin. I'm just doing it from a frame of reference because most people I would assume uh, are interested in Wuthering Waves played Genshin. So, you know, I, I think it's fair enough to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, apart from the visuals, the content, right? Uh, how I guess how the summons going to work. I don't know how the summons are going to work entirely, to be honest with you. Uh, I, this is another thing. A lot of games, they'll spam you with summons and oh, big celebrations for when you dump all your summons, right? It's like, uh oh hey this is a x type of character you're gonna want to grab them right so there's gonna be a w certain way they uh intend to design the monetization and sell their actual characters um what i'm hoping for and i know this sounds crazy to some people but i think there should be a multi every single week um now granted star rail actually does this because <laughs> because this is a funny thing uh if you do the math for star rail summons uh Typically, Star Rail gives you around 100 summons per update. It's been more. It's been less like 90 before. It's been like 120 in a couple updates. Star Rail gives you uh, around 100 per update, just for example. I think that's great. I think it works comfortably with the system. Um, as long as you're smart with your pulls and don't dump everything, you can easily beat everything fine with, you know, as a free-to-play. I even have an E2-S1 Akron, for example. Um, there's a lot you can do there, as long as you uh, play within, I guess, not play within reason i guess manage yourself wisely there's a lot you can do there uh genshin doesn't do that genshin i believe in the chiori update gave you like 50 pools which is ridiculous like i i genuinely think every gacha game needs to at least do a multi a week i don't know why they don't do that um but the reason why i'm saying it generally is because the player's gonna want to grind the game so if you give a multi a week they're like shit i gotta grind so i get my multi right like i think I think that's enough of an incentive for players to keep playing, getting a multi a week. I think that's pretty fair, too, for most gacha games. Um, granted, if it's a game like, um, 
I guess Dragon Ball Legends, uh, that doesn't really work. You kind of need more because of how intense it is. It's a PvP gacha game, so it's a bit differently. But you see what I'm saying? There needs it needs to be generous enough to where I want to log in and actually, you know, get the summons, right? If it's like Genshin where it's like, oh, 50 summons for the whole update, right? But guess what? Half of them are the exploration. I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> right? It's like, oh, the exploration sucks anyways, I'm not gonna do it. Right? Um, so you know, there needs to be a decent reward to actually playing the game because you're trying to play for fun right i'd imagine um unless you're some hyper giga nerd right who <clears throat> who may or may not be pulling up spreadsheets doing the calculations for character damage that definitely would not be me whatsoever i would never never do that that's just cringe um but uh yeah i mean that's basically that i mean you know i'm not sure what more to say i just want to talk about this game as i said I don't think it's going it, to well, well, let me again rephrase this. As I said, I don't think it's going to be the next Genshin, but it has the potential to be as long as they do everything right. Um if this game succeeds or I hope it succeeds obviously cuz we want the other game to be good. Um <clears throat> it could potentially overtake it, right? Which would be something very impressive from another company cuz right now Hoyverse kind of has a stranglehold on the gacha genre. Right. Um, and I think there's a lot of room for improvement, like what I said previously with the summon stuff and the events stuff, right? There's very easy ways to take advantage of what your game is, right? And I, I guess that's an overarching thing that I've been talking about here is that Hoyaverse has done a very poor job at taking advantage of what their game is. They've done a better job than Star Rail, but with Genshin in particular and with Wuthering Waves, is that they need to uh, take advantage of what their game is, right? This is an exploration game. Give us an incentive to explore, right? And better yet, if you give it an, us an incentive to explore, whenever you currently update the game, players are going to be like, okay, I'm going to go on and do the new exploration, right? And some people will probably disagree with me on that, on that point, but I think it's totally fair because the idea is that they're not taking away summons for you. It's just an extra thing for playing right then and there, right? And that's going to make the current players feel really good about it. And it's going to make uh, like newer players be like, okay, let me go and actually try to play this new content, right? Um, I think it'll work out. I think it'll work out pretty well. Um, maybe some people disagree with me on that, but that's basically that. Um, yeah, uh, that's all really I have to say. Uh, the game should be, you know, decently rewarding, right? Um, have good content, you know, and it again, it looks promising. I am worried personally about the the characters. I, I'll be honest. There's the whole name debacle on, uh, and, and stuff like that. I don't care. Um. I just think most of the Wuthering Waves characters are lame. Um, even even this guy, I don't really like him that much. I know a lot of people like this guy a lot. Um, yeah, I don't. I really don't like a bunch of the characters. Let me actually try to find the characters I do like. Um, I guess Encore, this stupid panda girl. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what she says. She's like, okay, I, I don't know. Um, hold on, let me actually pull it up. Okay, I just top-decked uh, the, the Wuthering Waves characters because... You know, I'm I'm lazy. Um, but yeah, in terms of characters, uh, I like uh Tao Tao Chi. She's cool. Uh Danjin is also pretty cool. I like her. Uh Yinlin is probably my favorite one. Uh, I definitely have to get her if she's available. Uh you know, so that's gonna be pretty fire. Uh yeah, I don't really like anybody else. <laughs> I don't, I really don't. Um It's just, just gaming. I think this is just gaming, but like weathering waves version i don't really know but yeah that that's about it uh, yeah i think i've yapped too much uh thank you guys for watching i'll see you later